What's going on guys, Evan Zentapani here and I am currently closing in on 12 weeks out from the New York Pro. A lot of you guys have been following me, you know that I haven't competed now in a few years and I'm kind of just getting this prep going. It's been a little while since I prepped, but it's, uh, it's all come back to me. It's, uh, kind of second nature to me at this point. I've been doing this for so many years. A couple weeks ago, I posted my pre-contest diet online and um, got a lot of comments, a lot of comments, some of it good, some of it critical. And uh, I want to talk about it because I think that discussing how does someone go about structuring their pre-contest protocol, uh, I think that's an interesting thing to talk about. And I'd like to maybe share with you my insight and give you an idea as to how I go about it. The thing I want to emphasize first and foremost, anything when it comes to diet and training for that matter, everything is relative and everything should be a progression. So what I mean is, okay, you're someone who you've been in an off season. Maybe you've never dieted for a contest before. Maybe you have, doesn't matter. You're going along and you're eating a certain way. You've been eating a certain way for several months, maybe several years. What you do not do is go and just like rework everything and throw everything out the window. You are getting ready to start a, a pre-contest diet. The worst thing you could do is just totally change everything, right? Change your protein sources, change your carbohydrate sources, cut calories dramatically, whatever it is. Um, it should be a progression because the reality is, okay, using myself as an example, uh, 16 weeks out, okay? prior to starting the prep, when, it, when I'm sitting down and I'm coming up with my protocol and I'm deciding what is my diet going to be. I consider the fact that every day, I usually have about five meals and each meal consists of X, Y, and Z. I know what, I know what the meals consist of. And each week, you know, I have like three refeed meals where I go out and I probably have like fast food or something really, really heavy and like a ton of calories. But uh, even on a daily basis, if I want something extra, you know, maybe it's after a meal and I want to have a piece of apple pie, I have it. Or it's before I'm eating and I'm hungry, so I have some chips and salsa, right? So I have my base diet in my off season, but then there's other things that are thrown in on top of it. So when it comes time to start my pre-contest diet, I don't even touch my diet. All I do is I just eliminate all that extra crap. So no more chips and salsa, no more pieces of apple pie, no more, you know, maybe an extra piece of fruit here or there, or just some random, uh, you know, random handful of nuts, whatever it may be. By simply just eliminating that, there's no need to even touch my diet yet. As it pertains to something like a refeed, rather than have, you know, three refeeds a week, I bring it down to two. Um, people may say, well, dude, you're in a prep. Why are you having uh, fast food twice a week? Because it's all relative, because I know that starting a prep at 290 pounds, if I were to just get rid of all that stuff right off the bat, it's too much of a cut. It's just calorie wise, it's just not necessary. So, you know, I say this to people all the time. If you, if, if someone, and I get people like this, they come to me, right? Maybe they're eight or 10 weeks out from a contest and they want me to help them, you know, come into the show. And I look at their diet and their diet is not good, <laughs> right? Like it's, um, they've got a lot of foods in there that maybe I wouldn't be having them eat. I don't immediately throw it all out the window. I said, well, geez, this guy looks pretty decent considering what he's been doing. I'm going to just maybe streamline this a bit, or I'm going to substitute a couple things. But if someone was eating a dozen donuts a day for just, you know, this is maybe an extreme example, but you're eight weeks out and you're eating a dozen donuts a day and you look pretty good. I probably wouldn't just get rid of the donuts. I'd probably cut them down to six a day. <laughs> Uh, and maybe, you know, replace some of that, some of those calories with, you know, something else, but everything is relative. So for me, you know, 16 weeks out, 15 weeks out from a show, I consider what I've been doing in the off season, five meals a day. Um, but I'm going to clean things up. So for me, um, I just basically considering the fact that I do eliminate some calories and cl clean things up. I add a, a protein shake for me. I add some animal meal. So rather than just have, you know, five feedings a day, now I'm having six. Everyone is different. I know my body from over the years. And I know that I have to eat enough food if I'm going to go into a show retaining my size and keeping my metabolism high. If I cut too much too soon, I just get smaller. I just get flatter and I don't really get that much harder. So I try to keep my food high, you know, nine to 10 ounces of protein per meal. 
cooked weight. Anytime you hear me give out numbers, um, those are all cooked values. So most meals for me, with the exception of my first meal of the day, which is seven whole eggs, and currently uh, a, a cup of oats and a cup of tea. There are other meals, um, with the exception of my last, which is three scoops of animal meal. Uh, my other, other four meals, right, it's uh, nine to 10 ounces of chicken or turkey. Uh, I don't have any red meat in the diet yet. I probably will as it goes on. Usually about a cup of rice and a cup of uh, usually something like kale. I try to opt for something really micronutrient dense. And this is another thing I want to touch on because a lot of you guys who comment were like, oh, where's your micronutrients? Dude, if you look at my diet, first of all, I would implore some of you guys to go out and actually look up some of the nutrition facts for animal proteins, okay? Meaning look up the nutrition facts for chicken or steak or turkey or fish. And you'd be surprised that there's actually quite a bit of vitamins and minerals contained in animal proteins. But I do add vegetables to my diet. And yeah, man, a, a cup of cooked kale, all right, is quite a bit of macro micros in there. I, I When I prep my food for the week, I get a big pot and it's filled to the brim with kale before I cook it down. So, I mean, that's a lot of green uh, vegetables there. You know, plus the inclusion of, you know, nuts, good some good micros in there. What else? Whole eggs, very vitamin and mineral rich. And I'm going to be honest, look, could I, could I devise a diet that was more perfect when it comes to micronutrients? Yeah, okay, sure. But I'm trying to get ready for a contest. So it's not, yes, it's still important to me, which is why I include, you know, plenty of leafy green veggies and things like that. But I'd be lying if I said, okay, I'm sitting here and I'm tabulating exactly how much vitamin C I'm getting and blah, 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 because I do consume a multi as well. I mean, I, I think my diet when it comes to whole foods is well-rounded enough and anything that might slip through the cracks, yeah, I'm, I'm to some degree banking on the fact that, you know, my supplementation is going to fill in those little cracks. I mean, that's the point of supplements. Um, I think a lot of us, even if we had the perfect diet, because we are bodybuilders and we're larger than most people and our activity, you know, is more strenuous. I still think even if you covered your bases really, really well with micronutrients, I still think you'd probably be well served to take a, a multivitamin and mineral anyways. Some people don't agree with that. That's just my feeling. One of the common questions I get about my protocol is what I include for supplementation. You know, a lot of people asking me, uh, you know, do you include creatine? Do you use uh, pre-workouts? Do you take nitric oxide boosters, et cetera, et cetera. For those of you that know me, you know, generally I keep things pretty simple. Uh, when it comes to supplementation, at least at this point in the game, you know, I'm pretty early in the prep, um, it's not a ton of supplements. Uh, I do use a multivitamin, you know, in the form of animal pack. I take a omega product to cover my bases when it comes to fatty acids in the form of animal omega. Um, I do use animal meal, which um, I'm proud to say that I had a hand in formulating, and I use that as one of my meals. Uh, and yes, I'm confident in enough, confident enough in it to include it as a part of my prep. Um, and I use, you know, just some other kind of just like basic health type supplements. You know, in here I've got some uh, vitamin D3, some vitamin K2 some ubiquinol, which in case anyone isn't familiar, is the reduced form of coenzyme Q10, uh, a little bit extra calcium magnesium, a little bit of benfotamine, which is a, a specific form of thiamine, um, which is supposed to help prevent glycation, basically keep my cardiovascular system healthy, very important. <laughs> um, and that's really about it. Um, as the prep goes on, I will probably begin to utilize a lot more amino acids around training as my calories come down. Animal Nitro, I, I believe is the best amino acid product on the market. It's a, a rich uh, essential amino acid product. It's uh, in capsules, which I prefer because I like to consume around 20 grams of EAAs around training. And uh, to do that with a drink or things like that, it's just for me, it's not appealing. So I like the fact that it's in capsules. And when I'm start cutting calories quite a bit and I start, you know, feeling a little bit beat up, the effects of the EAAs really, really start to shine. I'm a big, big believer. I've been including them in my prep since I first started back in 2005. I'll probably, you know, on days, maybe like a back day or a leg day, uh, depending on what's going on with my body, I might choose to include some carbs around training. Uh, so yeah, I utilize Universal's Carbo Plus. It's all pretty simple. I don't go nuts 
with supplements, uh, but the things I use, I do believe in. You know, when, when it comes to training in a prep, um, again, very similar to diet and supplementation, it's really a continuation of what's been going on in the off season. So it's not like I'll begin a prep and then just totally start a new, you know, training protocol where I'm doing all different exercises, a totally different split. You know, in an off season, I'm usually training four to five days a week. Currently, I'm doing the same. Um, I don't change any of that. I'm not really changing my time spent in the gym. I may, you know, look, I, knowing that in you know a matter of weeks, I'm going to have to be on stage in a little tiny piece of piece of underwear. There's pressure, so I've got to be in shape, right? So naturally, training intensity is going to increase a little bit, and this is serious now. <laughs> the clock is ticking. So every time I'm in the gym, as it, you know, every week that passes, every day that passes, it gets a little bit more serious. So just being mindful to keep intensity as high as possible, you know, given an option, you know, we're always choosing what exercises we can do. And given the option, for example, between doing some kind of machine row for my back or loading up the barbell and doing some barbell rows, I am much more likely to opt for the barbell rows knowing that they're gonna burn more calories, place a greater stress on my body and ultimately help me get in better condition. Uh, and that's, that's a question I, I mentioned, I mentioned this in one of my recent posts about, you know, squats and deadlifts becoming so important in a prep and people said, well, you know, why is it because a squat is a superior exercise for legs? Not necessarily. You know, we can argue about that, about, you know, muscle stimulation and what movements are the best. Um, but one of the most important things you do in a prep is you train, all right? What does that mean? You're training your body. You know, you're trying to force your body to do things it's not accustomed to doing, make it uncomfortable. And it becomes a little bit more difficult doing that just sitting on a machine. But, you know, you load up a barbell and you've got it on your back squatting your brains out, you know, and you know, uh, you go until you're afraid you're not going to be able to get up for the next rep. Hopefully you've got someone behind you who can help you force a few reps. That just the stress that that creates is really profound. And what I found uh, and what I've seen in other people is that leads you to get in better shape. It's just this, the stress that it places on you. It's a big calorie burner. When you're trying to get ready for a contest, you're not just looking for the most maximal muscle stimulation, you know, hook yourself up to wires and, you know, measure what, you know, gives you the most neurological recruitment. It's about just loading the body, subjecting yourself to stress because it will create a result. I mean, that's, that's a really non-technical, <laughs> non-scientific way of just explaining what I've experienced over the years. So yes, when I train, I like to do a lot of free weight movements. I like to use the barbell a lot. I like to use dumbbells a lot. I like to stand up, bend over, whatever it is, uh, as opposed to just sitting down on a machine because uh, I find it more challenging and I find the result that it produces to be superior. So that's my training really in a nutshell. And, you know, like I said, as it goes on, it will just get more and more intense and better and better and better. Thank you guys for watching. Um, you know, I would encourage you to tune in and follow this prep as it unfolds. I will be posting bi-weekly updates. You can follow it here. That's it for now. I'll see you guys soon.